Good evening and Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you are here to worship with us. At this time, we're going to have the Advent reading. Actually, we're not. I don't see them. So the Advent readers are not in here. So at this time, we <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to sing a song. Why don't we do that first? Won't you stand as we worship? the reading 
for our candles. This is from Matthew 2, the Magi visit the Messiah. Verse 1, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star that they had seen when it rose, it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Won't you stand as we continue in worship? Oh, 
wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. You know, without the fulfillment of the prophecies, this holiday means nothing. It's the beginning for us as Christians. It's just the fleshly beginning of our God. He's so much bigger. Amen. So we sing songs about a wonderful name and a beautiful name. And we sing songs about the birth of a baby. God had a plan. to fruition and bought our eternity. Don't forget that, please. If you remember nothing else tonight, don't forget that that plan is for your eternity and my eternity. And death couldn't hold him. He started as a baby. He ended in glory on the throne. Amen. And we will join him. not hold you that veil tore before you you silence the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no you have no equal. Yours is the King of the God you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing comes against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. Or before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, and you have no Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing comes after this. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.
Father, we just worship you this evening. And we're so grateful for the gift of your son. And I thank you, God, that if we call you Father, we have the gift of your Holy Spirit. It doesn't end here. So, Lord, I pray that you would just change hearts, draw us all closer to you, Lord. And if there's one here that doesn't know you, let tonight be. Let it be the night. Bring salvation this Christmas night. Lord, we worship you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul Thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
practiced all day. Good evening. <laughs> I think it's the first Christmas Eve I didn't say good morning. Uh, most every Christmas Eve I get up and like, hey, good morning everyone, because that's what I'm used to saying. All right, if you have your Bibles, do me a favor and turn over to Isaiah 9. If you don't have a Bible, it's, there's a bunch of them in front of you more, more than likely, underneath the chair in front of you. There's like a little rack. Today is Christmas Eve. It does not feel like Christmas, does it? It came so fast. And without the, uh, the snow and all of the, we don't have that Christmas feeling, right? And a lot of people chase after that Christmas feeling. They just want to feel like it's Christmas. And what I began to realize is that Christmas is definitely not about a feeling. It's not a feeling. It's not something that, that is dependent on how I feel. So let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse 2. This is a very famous Christmas passage, and this is what it says. It says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Obviously, we know what we're talking about because we have hindsight of 2020. But this is Isaiah writing to the people who are being taken into exile. And he is saying, listen, there is hope. There is hope in darkness. Those who are walking in darkness have seen a great light, not those who are walking in darkness will someday find a light. He's saying those walking in darkness have seen a great light. And so I want you to stop for a second and I want you to think, what in the world is he talking about, about darkness? Now, because you're in church, you're instantly thinking, well, he's talking about spiritual darkness, right? There's, there's a part which he's talking about that. But this is a great way, the use of this word darkness and then the people living in deep darkness. He uses two different phrases. One that does talk about lack of light and the other one, deep darkness, is lack of life. So when he's saying those who have walked in darkness have seen a light and a light has dawned on those who are living dead. Now you're asking, how can you live dead, right? How can you walk in darkness? That doesn't work very well either. Have you ever tried that? 
We used to have a basement that had a black pole in the middle of it. And there was no light. Just the one light switch at the bottom of the stairs. Remember that? It's at the bottom of the stairs. Thanks, Dad. So when we were terrified of the dark, we had to shut that light off and run up the stairs. And the door actually would close on you as you made it down there. It's terrifying. But I want you to stop and I want you to ask some good questions. Remember, I've been asking you to think. I don't want you to come to Scripture without thinking. Don't just do what somebody else says. Listen and think through it. When he says that there is a people who have been walking in darkness, what does that mean? Does it not mean hopelessness? There are people who have no hope. And think about it. If there is no God, how, if there is no God, how can there be hope? What is hope if it's not attached to God? Brendan, let me, can I steal you for a minute? We're going we're gonna to do a, a quick thing. Jordan, be happy that he's here because I was going to call you up. <laughs> Jordan's like, man, this guy kills me every time. You're always over there and you dress so nicely. All right. So I asked Brendan already. I was like, man, are you, are you really shy? So if you don't know, Brendan, he is uh, part of the Hearst family, which is right here in the, I guess, third row. There we go. I probably should have asked your brother. <laughs> so he's the non-shy one. All right. So uh, they live down in Louisiana. And they are missionaries sent from Trinity to do uh, emergency, well, I always forget the name of it, emergency response down in uh, Louisiana. And uh, they are taking and rebuilding and discipling an entire area where, that has been hammered with floods and many other uh, ir very huge issues, not just physical, but so many spiritual issues as well. So that's, he's part of that family. So if you haven't seen him, you're like, who's this kid? Where'd he come from? This is one of my favorite kids. So here we go. All right. So the question I, I want to ask you is what do you want for Christmas? Uh, I really want to see my friend Wesley again. Oh, yeah. Oh, now we're all like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Wes is awesome. Wes also was here and moved. We need to bring him back. All right, hopefully he's watching on, on. Okay. What present do you want your parents to give you for Christmas? What have you asked for? I want them to give me a... Dream big, buddy. Let me think. <laughs> a Maserati. A million dollars. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if mom and dad are going to come up with that. All right, is there anything else in particular that you've been asking for? What, what's, he, what's he asking for? No? Do you know? No. All right. What did you ask for? What did you want last year? I wanted Lego Knights, which I also got. Okay. You got your Lego Knights. All right. Very good. Now, let me ask you, your Lego Knights, right, that you got last year, that you were so excited with, you probably didn't sleep real well, did you? Right. Yeah, probably not. No, no. Where are they? Lego bin at home. So are they all put together in the Lego bin at no. home? No. Are they now hundreds of thousands of pieces in different sections? Uh, well, they came in two packs and there were eight weapons. Oh, and nice. So they, it was kind of impossible to keep them all together. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, go have a seat. I will probably ask you some questions from down there. Do you remember growing up being so excited about certain presents, right? I don't even know what they were. I would get so excited, I would not be able to sleep, I would be so pumped, and I can't even tell you where they are or even what they were. Like his Lego Knights will probably never be a knight again. The, the, the possibility of that actually coming back together as a Lego Knight is slim to none. Because what we do, and this is an example of what we do in our lives, we live in darkness. We live in darkness because we put our hope in things that just kind of disappear. Think about it and play it all out. Everything that you've ever wanted, where is it? Most of it you've probably thrown away at one point or another. Or you have it in storage somewhere and you haven't seen it for a number of years. What's going to happen to that when you're gone? You know, we, 
I want you to stop and think about all of the things that you've been so excited for, that you have, you have just been so pumped for. I can't wait to get this. Remember your first car, right? Remember when you bought something big and you're like, this is what I want. And where is it? Mine is long gone in a junkyard somewhere. But do you see, we don't even understand the darkness that we walk around in. We have our hope tied to so many other things. We have our hope tied to things that just disappear. And our final hope is what? That we die with as much stuff as we can? What is our final hope? So stop and think for a second. Before this all, all talked about, Isaiah is saying, listen, you're a people walking around in darkness and you don't even know that there's darkness. You don't even know that there's things out there called light so that you can actually see. And it says, to those who are walking in darkness, there is a great light. To those who are in, in the walking dead, not just walking in darkness, but those who are walking and have lost all hope. Right? Because when we're younger, like we have a couple that just got engaged, right? Their hope is all bubbling up and excited. You guys are engaged, you're bubbling up and all excited. Josh, I'm not pointing at you. Don't look at me like that. You know, we're bubbled up and all excited because our hope is in, that, in, the, in the future that we have. And then suddenly some of those things don't come to fruition the way we wanted them to. And they don't turn out to be exactly what I wanted them to be. And suddenly our hope be just... And as we get older, we become less hopeful. And we have less things to hope in. That's those who are walking in deep darkness. But those who are walking in darkness and those who are walking in deep darkness, you have the same problem. There is no light. And what God is saying here in this verse is he's saying those who are walking in darkness, there has come a light. Listen to the words again. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Skip down to verse 6. He explains what that light is. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. That light is not a thing. It's a person. That light that has come into the darkness. The hopeless world, hope has come. And that hope that has come is a person. And his name is Christ the Lord. It is Jesus. And on him, the government will be on his shoulders. It is talking about a king who is to come. One who is going to replace you on your throne and finally bring you joy and peace and love. And you have opportunity for that. The problem is this. Not all of us know we're walking in darkness. But this morning, I want you to see that there is light that has dawned. That light that has dawned is Jesus Christ. So if you play out your life, if you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, he goes, it is not a very, uh, not a very encouraging book, right? It starts off by saying everything is vanity. It's all worthless, right? What do you do? You work really, really hard. Why? Well, so, so I, saw, uh, I saw Francis Chan. I keep calling him Jackie Chan. So if I, if I say Jackie, it's two different guys. Francis Chan, way more biblical. All right. He took a rope and he showed this rope and he said, this rope is your life, right? And it goes on for eternity, but this little tiny part at the beginning is your life. And on this rope, you have this little tiny section, which is where you are alive. And you live 99% of your life to do what? To retire. Right? I work incredibly hard so that for a few years I can do what I want. And that's what we put our hope in. And those of you who are retired, most of you give me no hope because you guys are just work way too hard. Right? And so we have this mentality that there's always something to look forward to. And once we get there, it's not enough. It's just like all of our Christmas presents. 
And God is saying, no, that's not the joy of Christmas. That's not the feeling of Christmas you are looking for. What you are truly looking for is the light that has dawned. Your hopelessness is gone. All the disappointments that you've had in your life are erased. Because there is hope in this child. And this child is going to come and he's going to die on the cross for your sins. He's going to take your punishment that you might be in relationship with God and have everything you've ever wanted. So in a few minutes, we're going to light candles. We're going to all stand up and we're going to kind of get as much in a circle as we can in a room that's not circular. And we're going to sit here and we're going to light these candles. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Right? Because those who believe in him have no darkness. Because the light has dawned. My question for you is this. So many of us come walking in these doors as if there is no light in our life. But Jesus is the light of the world. And he is that for us. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. When you drive around and you see the lights on the trees and you see the lights on the bushes and the lights on the house, Christmas is all about lights, right? There's light everywhere. We come here and what do we do? Russ lit the candles, lights. Why do we spend so much time talking about light? Because light is life. And that light has dawned on both those who have no hope and those who live with zero hope in their lives. Light has dawned. There is something you actually can attach your hope to. So as you leave here, I have one question for you. Has that light entered your world? And if it has not, what is your hope in? Is it in anything that is steady? Is it in anything that is firm? Are you really walking in darkness and you never knew it? Those who have been walking in darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child has been born. A son has been what? Given. Now here's the trick about something that is given. When something that is given, it must be received. Right? My grandmother... I have very few memories of her. She passed when I was, when I was really young. But I rem I'll never forget this. I was si we were sitting there at Christmas, and my mom went out and got her a present, wrapped it all up, and gave it to her. So we are sitting in their living room on their shag orange carpet. It's about the only thing I remember about the house. And we're sitting on the carpet, and my mom gives her the gift. She opens it up and says, I don't like these. Here, Jim. And gives them to her husband. That's it. She didn't receive the gift. She wasn't the most pleasant of people. Shocker. But she never got a present. Because she never received it. And this it says, for a son has been given. Jesus Christ was given to you only if you receive him. And you have to accept them as in any gift that you would be given. Because the wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And a gift has to be received. God doesn't force it on you. How great would it be at Christmas if you're like, no, just take the gift. Just take it. You know, that's not what Christmas is. We need to receive the gift that he has given us. So I'm going to read to you the passage one more time. And think about that as we go to light these candles, if you want to pull your candles out. It says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. To those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. We live in a land of deep darkness. We may have the light, but the rest of this world does not. I want you to notice one thing as we begin to light these candles, because we shut the lights off and it gets a little dark in here. Not pure darkness, not deep darkness. But as we light the candles and it spreads, the light becomes contagious. The light begins to spread, and the more light there is, the more you can see. How desperately does this dark world need the light of Jesus? Let's pray.
Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you that you are the light of the world. That we no longer have to live in darkness, but that we get to live in light. We thank you for this child that was born, this son that was given. May we receive it. Lord, for those who today are just realizing that their hope is in nothing firm, God, I pray that you would open their eyes to see that their hope can be in things that are firm, and they can be in you. Father, we praise you for all that you do. You're an amazing God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if I could have Sherry come and join me, because you don't want me to start this. And everyone stand up. Get in the closest circle that you can. Right? So some of you may still be in your seats. Um, By the way, some of the not-so-bigger versions of us have these, or if husbands, your wives gave these to you, they're afraid you're going to burn that church down. All you do is break them in half, and then shake them, and you get light. All right? Jenna, can you shut the lights one more time? All right, you, you pass that way, I'll pass this way. All right, Jordan, I don't want to light you on fire. And then you get to mine. There you go, Beth. Keep spreading it. Once you get the light, make sure you continue to pass it. I'm going to go jump into the middle of the crew over here. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> 